Hello and welcome to another quick tech video. My name is Aaron, a technical support specialist here at VirtuWorks. Today we're gonna to cover a much requested topic, using the Apple AirPods or other wireless headsets with conferencing software such as Teams, Zoom, or even Discord on a Windows device. Apple PCs will work with AirPods natively, although an update may be required. If you have a Mac and your AirPods are already connected, you can skip further along in the video where we start discussing the configuration of the apps themselves. Windows will need to be equipped with a Bluetooth radio, Check your model with the manufacturer's website to confirm or submit a help ticket via the traditional means for assistance. USB Bluetooth adapters can be purchased for less than $20 online or $30 or so at a traditional office supply store. To get started, we have to pair the headset to the PC. Each manufacturer has its own procedure for putting the headset into pairing mode. For the AirPods and AirPod Pros, there is a button on the charging case under the hinge on the back side and an indicator light on the front side. With the case open and a long press and hold on the button, it will set the headphones into pairing mode, which will make them discoverable to any machine searching for Bluetooth devices. This will be indicated by a steady pulsing white LED. We will leave the case open until the pairing has completed. With the light pulsing in pairing mode, we next access the Bluetooth connection page on your PC. This is easily reached by hitting the start button, then typing Bluetooth and selecting Bluetooth and other device settings from the list. Alternatively, the notification menu at the bottom right of the screen displays numerous icons, of which two are of note. There's typically a Bluetooth icon. This toggles the Bluetooth radio on and off. The other is the connect icon, which will list all available devices in range of the PC. With the pairing function still active, click the plus sign where it says add Bluetooth or other device. The next page asks which type of device you wish to connect to. The top option is Bluetooth, which we'll click on. If multiple devices are detected, it may take a while for the machine to detect the device by name. If the AirPods were connected to an iPhone already, they will have assumed the name of the owner's display name on that device. Otherwise, they will show up as unknown device initially, then AirPod Pro. If AirPods Pro never shows up, try to connect to the unknown device. If that is the correct device, the name will change to reflect the device's name and then will be connected. If not detected, turn Bluetooth off and then on again with the icon I mentioned previously. Close the case and open again, then hold the button to initiate pairing mode. Now is a good time to pull the earbuds out of their case so that the connection is maintained even if the case is closed. With the device connected to the machine, we need to set the headset as the default device and the default communications device. In the bottom right quarter, most PCs will have a speaker icon displayed. Clicking on the icon allows for the adjustment of the volume level, but right-clicking on the icon will bring up a menu where the selection we need to hit is called Sounds. Clicking that option will launch the Windows Audio Control Panel. This window is separated into four tabs, Playback, Recording, Sounds, and Communication. For our purposes, we will only need to focus on the Playback and Recording tabs. If the pairing process is completed successfully, the device will appear twice in the Playback tab. AirPods have two functions. One is hands-free AG audio device, and the other is labeled as a stereo device. Both will be labeled according to their name with the hands-free or stereo listed beside it. We have tested with a few other brands, even an off-brand like Skull Candy. These all had the option device name, hands-free AG, and stereo as well. If listening to music was the goal, the stereo option is going to provide the best audio reproduction the device is capable of. If the intention is to use for telephony apps like meeting software, then hands-free AG is the proper choice. Since we are demonstrating the use of these devices for meetings, we will demonstrate the settings germane to that option. First, we will right-click the AirPods Pro hands-free icon and select Set as Default Device. Then right-click again and choose Set as Default Communication Device. Next, we'll slide over to the Recording tab and locate the AirPods Pro hands-free AG icon. Observant users will note that there is not a second option under the Recording tab for stereo. This is due to the fact that when in stereo mode, the microphone is disabled, thus no device to manage in the Recording tab. Now with the hands-free AG, or the similar option for a different brand of headphones, set as the default sound device and the default comms device, we are ready to go into the meeting software and modify the settings there. We'll start with Teams as the majority of our clientele employs that software as their go-to collaboration or meeting software. Clicking on the circle icon to the top right, 
typically the circle displays the signed in user's initials, we need to access settings by clicking on that option. Select devices from the navigation pane to the left and devices setting page should be displayed. Under audio devices, drop the selection box down and select the hands-free AG device. This will populate the speaker and microphone settings to both reflect the hands-free AG audio device as the default. There is an option to select the level of noise suppression, auto by default. This will try to suppress background audio that is not speech. Experiment with the setting to your liking. Options for the ringtone and webcam are on this page as well. Directly under the device selection box is the Make Test Call button. Select that option if you would like to test your newly connected device or ensure the settings are correct if you opted to use the device to monitor audio between meetings. You should be able to hear the message and leave one after the beep that will play back immediately. In Zoom settings, for example, there are similar settings for noise suppression as well as an option for ringtone and ease of use. Both the input and output levels can be set as well as the option to force a different device to play back the ringtone when calls are received, such as external speakers. There's a microphone test button mid-page. Discord settings are a bit more simplistic. It could be found by clicking the settings gear and then voice and video settings. There are two selection boxes at the top for input and output devices, a levels control for each, and a microphone test that will echo back to you anything you say during the test. There's an option below for hands-free voice activity and push to talk, PTT. Push to talk requires that a key be chosen as the talk button. No other users will hear your voice if the key is not held. It is not a toggle. If voice activity is selected, the input sensitivity will help dial in the correct level where background noise is not triggering the active input. Be sure to test while doing normal office things, such as typing, to ensure that you are filtering out all unwanted input. Hopefully this guide has put you on the right track to getting your Bluetooth audio devices connected to your PC and configured properly so that they are available for use within today's common meeting or telephony apps. If you're still having problems or your device is not behaving the way our guide indicated it would, submit a support ticket via the traditional means. Please leave a like if the information was helpful to you and consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell to get an alert anytime new content is posted. Again, my name is Aaron and I thank you for joining us today.